Okay, hello everybody. And, um, and today we are live from Cannes, from the Cannes Film Market. As you might know, it's virtual. Um, so uh, hello everybody. Hello, uh, Sandeep. Very nice to have you as our guest. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Namaste, namaste. And namaste to you also, Raman. Um, very namaste. nice to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. And Thank welcome, Sandeep, also from my side. And it's a pleasure to be a co-host with Stefan on this talk today. Thank you. So last year, you have been our guest in Berlin at Indo-German Film Week in July. So um, it was very nice um, having you and having you um, with your with the opening film, it was Zombie Valley Return. How do you remember the time in Berlin? Uh, have you liked Berlin? How was it? Well... They are brilliant and very uh, uh, loved memories of Berlin and especially the festival because I think that was the first uh, international festival that the film went into. And uh, Germany, again, uh, uh, is a country where I've seen, I've loved the work, even the filmmakers like Fassbinder and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of directors have seen their work and I've always wanted to be in Germany to share my work there and you know, see how people connect and people react to my work. And Don't Believe really Return being a, again a very close film and film which we had lately made. Uh, we were very keen, uh, my director, writer and me and my team to uh, really get uh, you know, reactions of people there when they saw the film. And because uh, I feel uh, the Indian content is very connective there and people have, uh, you know, very warmly uh, received Indian content there. Even Bollywood is, because I've seen the songs that were played and the performances played on the Bollywood songs were so delightful. It was, I mean, they loved it from heart. So it was a wonderful experience. It felt like, okay, it's, you know, uh, the language is different, but they are my brothers. They are my folks there. <clears throat> and we have had also um, a great screening of Dom Bivali Fast. You know, I remember we had a, a very intensive um, Q&A after that. Um, oh, yes. And uh, yeah, I have also um, lovely um, uh, remindings on that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, that was again a very nostalgic feel because... I think after many years, I've seen uh, myself, I've seen the film on the big screen and uh, with the audiences, live audiences and the, the questions, queerness and the reactions for that film again got me, you know, back to those nostalgic days when we actually struggled to make that film. <laughs> and uh, well, lovely. In fact, that was again a great moment that we had, you know, because Don't Be really Return and then Don't Be really Fast and those people who had seen both the films and there were questions which, you know, why this film and why, and it was a brilliant uh, take. I think these, this, this connectivity, this event never happened again. You know, don't be really written and don't be really fast again, you know, uh, looking, I mean, seeing that film back to back and then talking on both the films. Yeah. <laughs> I think anyways, we, we will take you down the memory lane today. We have some questions prepared for that. But I mean, you, you talked about challenges, right? So at, at the moment, we are also in the times of COVID, where the whole industry is going through a lot of challenges, not only Bollywood industry, I think every part of the world is facing this challenge. So how is the situation in Mumbai? And how is the film industry dealing with it at the moment? Well, now the level of anxiety obviously have gone high because uh, Patiently, people have been, you know, waiting for three months to open this. And uh, uh, especially the television industry, because they have stopped their telecast and they have repeatedly done their telecast. But now I think there is a pressure from the sponsors. They have, you know, kind of, you know, those uh, insecurity of the sponsors can, they can, they might lose that. So there's a lot of anxiety here. Mm -hmm. So I think television industry is trying to start early here. They have, I think, already started day before. Uh, but then there is a fear always and uh, even the artists, there is a fear with them because you have people from different strata, you know, there are makeup men, there are technicians all around you. So one has to take those care of, so maintaining that social, and there are lots of uh, compliances also applied while shooting. So those compliances also are a little burden 
on the producers and the channels so yeah. people are trying to cope up with that but uh, there's a still a fear you know if if at all anybody gets infected on the sets then what happens it might there is the fear of shutting down again so all those fears are there but people are trying to you know uh, get back uh, so the films and i think the web series and uh, even the plays the performing art will take a little time because gathering of in a theater i think here in mumbai and india will take a little more time i think couple of months more yeah no i i am monitoring from here also because of our radio channel how is the situation in india and especially mumbai and maharashtra it is also badly impacted by covid at the moment so yeah. i, I you are right it will take some time for it to come yeah. back to to the normal situation yeah uh, i think uh, yeah. many people here artists have uh, started uh, actively doing something on the digital platforms either on facebooks and zoom and you know lots of so there are even uh, stand up comedies or one man shows which are people are doing it from home or their private spaces and they're you know coming on zoom and uh, digital platforms so i think digital platform is going to be a very active uh, platform and that is going to be a way of life now with all industries it's not only the performing industry but all industries everybody is trying on zoom meets and uh, uh, you know uh, everything so uh i i think uh, all over the world and especially in india because of the lot of population and one can travel less by being on digital so you can minimize your you know work by minimizing your travel and be on digital yeah so, no i think the, the new normal will be much different from the normal that we are used to you're right a lot of digital part will come into our lives and so a question to you sandeep ji with that i mean has it given you more time for yourself or has it made you more busy from the times before in fact in the first month when the lockdown when the public lockdown happened there was suddenly a back there was a lot of time so you know i i used my time reading all my books which i wanted to and i couldn't get my hands on listen to lot of music you know which again got into the old times and all the retrospective of different musics and all that so a lot of films and but after a month then it because the habit here I and mean, in the way of life here is very busy and traveling and so then i started missing the outside world and uh, then again as i said then digital became our platform we had lot of meeting talks and chats and so all my content meetings and all my script meetings for another films and web series and all they started happening on zoom and then uh, i also uh, joined some um, uh, organization called transgenization which is helping me into you know uh, uh, coming on different ways and thinking into different ways of you know uh, into work and your personal being i mean the way you, the life will be later on so yeah. that has kept me uh, uh, quite busy and uh, but a new other world has opened as i said uh, you know this kind of informative world and um, uh, uh, motivational world and content world i have seen lot of different content either from youtube and different platforms so uh, yes that has kept kept me busy for a while and uh, now even i am kind of missing the real shoots now actually because it has been there for so many years and you're kind of now waiting to kind of come out with whatever you're feeling and whatever you've written and whatever you know i i guess the, we we have realized at least personally what i can say i am missing the things which were never on my list that these things i will miss in my life so mm -hmm. i mean it has also made me realize what is really important and what is not so important that i used to think that way right true yeah. true yeah. stefan uh, would you like to say something before i yeah, ask so, him some um, question i i would just want to know the um, how uh, sandeep you have been affected by covid-19 directly in the meaning of the any shooting or only the development where, because development you can do from home which is a good use then or well i uh, one thing is i missed a very big award function here because i won the best actor for the critics choice award uh, and which is a very kind of a prestigious award because it yeah 
Yeah, and it, uh, congratulations. Uh, yeah, thanks. So for Dumbili return again. So, you know, it must be. So, uh, and uh, it was supposed to be a very big function because it covered all the industries, the South industry, the main Bollywood and the Marathi industry and Gujarati. So all films and there was, they would have been a big gathering of all the artists from all over the regional uh, uh, world and everywhere and Bollywood and all. So, and, you know, getting a receiving an award there live was uh, something which I was really looking forward to. But again, because of the COVID that got cancelled and that function happened on the digital, this thing, and we couldn't be there. So uh, that is something which I really missed. Uh, but otherwise, I, as I said, uh, yes, uh, there were quite a few, like I was uh, shooting a web series called uh, City of Dreams, uh, the second season of that web series. First uh, season went very well last year on Hotstar. So Nagesh Kukunur has written and directed. It's a brilliant serial. We're very uh, nicely. I'm very enjoying that series. And suddenly this COVID came. So we just shot for a month and this COVID came and we had to shut the shoot. We have to close the shoot for a while. And now it's uh, three months and now we really don't know when it will start. So the, here the main thing is um, because it was a very intense role and you had gone into those finer areas of that role. And suddenly when you stopped and you don't know, and when it stopped, when it starts, then, you know, it's a little challenge to go back into the, of course, you have the craft and you can always, but uh, that uh, little inside journey that uh, gives a break here, you know. Yeah. So uh, that is one thing. And again, as I said, uh, we have been working on some web series as my production house. Uh, there are two content which was almost kind of liked by a, uh, OTT platform and we were supposed to have a final meeting on that content, co content and that suddenly again didn't happen because of the COVID because of the distancing and lockdowns and everything has become very slow because their pattern of uh, work has also you know come down to a I mean it has got a different pace so the original uh, series or the work which was shut down will have to start then the new things will start so pace has gone very slow so, uh, but I think now that's a part of the life and you have to kind of uh, be a, uh, accustomed to whatever. So here I did a lot of, again, my yoga and meditation a lot because that helped me, you know, get back to my, the, the, the new rhythm of life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's yeah. the reason you look so relaxed. Yeah, I'm sure because, because that's what, uh, because here I think it's again, the rebooting of life. That's what I think everybody has realized. And one has to really get back to what is life and what is the meaning of life? What, what are you doing? I mean, what is the purpose of, you know, you doing things here in life? So all those, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, retrospection of your life, your purposes in life, and all this is happening besides your work and besides your yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Sandeep ji, are you ready to go down the memory lane now? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well, Sandeep Kulkarni, a well-known well name in the field of Indian movies, especially in Marathi language cinema. Well, your first movie was called Mamo in the year 1994. Now, there is always an interesting story behind the first project. Oh, so yes. would you like to share with us how did this movie happen? I mean, what what were the circumstances under which you you were chosen for this movie and how it happened? Well, uh, I was doing a, doing theater a lot with uh, Pandit Satyadev Dube in Marathi, Hindi, and English. So we were kind of doing you know two plays, three plays together, and I was very uh, intensely busy with theater. And Mr. Sham Benegal, Govind Elani, all these directors used to come and watch our plays in Prithvi and all that. So Syam Benegal had uh, liked my work. So when he uh, was doing this film Mamo, there was a role of uh, Mr. Apte, who is an immigration officer from a Marathi background. And that was a very crucial role because he's the one who uh, makes this main character who's uh, played by Farida Jalal and uh, Mamo, I mean the character. Yeah. And, uh, she comes often to get her uh, visa uh, extended and which has a challenge because she's come from Pakistan. It's that Pakistan background film. So it had uh, very good layers in it. Now the 
the most important thing that happened in Mamo, that this is what I give completely to Mr. Sham Benegal is, uh, that was my first film because I was doing a little television here and there, but that was my first feature film. And uh, we rehearsed for the scenes and uh, everything was done. And Farida ji, again, my favorite actor. So I was very excited to work with her, but we did all the rehearsals. And when the camera action happened, there used to be a noise of the camera at that point of time. It actually used to make a noise, a loud, ni nice noise, properly nice. So everything go went silent and this camera sound happened. And I suddenly went blank. And this thing happened thrice. And even I didn't know and what's happening because we had rehearsed and I was, you know, I've done a lot of plays and everything. So Mr. Sham Benigal, he just kind of relaxed everybody. He took me aside and he said, Sandeep, I have seen your work. You're a brilliant actor. I know that this is your first film. So just start believing that the camera doesn't exist. Once you start believing that you will be a film actor. And that was the mantra which made me a film actor. So nice. it's so simple, but you know, it comes with wisdom and how to handle an actor and he exactly knowing what is happening with an actor's mind, you know? So yeah. this is where great directors are great. Yes. Exactly. I think um, it, it's understanding the mindset of your actor and then really helping where the help is required. I mean, that's, that's a mark of a great actor, a great director, I would say. And you, I think you, you started with such a big name. So yeah, it, I think it, it was a perfect start that you would have hoped for, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, and after that, then again, uh, uh, Govind Elani's Hazar Chaura Sikhi Ma and Sudhir Mishra's Israat Ki Subhani. So in fact, Hindi films happened uh, before my first film, Marathi film called Shwas. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, should I go ahead with the second question? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Now let's, let's move a little bit towards TV show. Yeah. Mm. The show called Swabhiman. Mm. Yeah. I think this was one of the big hits on TV screens in India. And I would say it was one of the very first multi-star TV shows that was scripted by Shobha Day and directed by Mr. Mahesh Bhatt himself. I mean, some yeah. big names that were involved in this association in this TV show. And you have been part of this team as well. Yeah. So how was your experience working with such a big star-studded team? <laughs> Actually, uh, I had a great resistance for doing a daily, daily soap like Swabhiman or whatever. Because I was more inclined toward films. Because when I'm a school of art, JJ school of art student, I'm basically an artist. So in fact, I'd, when I was in college, I was exposed to world cinema. So that is where I was, I was exposed to German cinema, you know, Japanese films, all, all different uh, uh, world cinema. So I was more kind of uh, wanting to do film. And this was before uh, Mamo, in fact. And uh, this was a push from uh, Satyadev Dubey. You know, he said that uh, you cannot uh, say no because you have no and you have to be into practice of something. So he pushed me because he was close to Mahesh Bhatt, Mahesh Bhatt and he was working for Mahesh Bhatt for writing something and that is where he pushed me. But that is again, you know, these masters, they give you a little push to get that because unless you have that practice of that medium, you will never have that, you know, practice of the other, other you have to. So whatever I am now is being into different mediums. So I have done experimental plays, I've done professional plays, I've done television, I've done films. I've, so all this finally gives you a bigger experience. So I think I would suggest all my actors or the new talent that don't stop yourself. Try and, you know, get, uh, you know, experience of all kinds of mediums. Then you can decide finally where you want to stay. Yeah. No, I think this, this overall experience that you get from different fields also make you realize what are the differences in different formats and how, how you can shape up yourself in different parts. And somewhere it's, it's also like bringing your real talent out because different mediums ask for different kind of uh, performances from you. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a great thing to, that, that you, you have been through different mediums. So let's, let's move towards 2004 now. Yeah, you talked about movie Shwas. Yeah, you played a character of a doctor in this movie. Yeah. And well, it is mentioned that after watching this film, the legendary actress Shabana Azmiji asked you 
if you had really studied medicine or not right yeah <laughs> i would say i mean it's a big compliment for an actor isn't it that was the biggest compliment i got for that film yeah, yeah. so now i mean the, the movie was also the official entry of india to the prestigious oscars of the year 2004 So how did you feel about being part of Oscars I mean everybody wants to be there and you yeah. you were there so yeah. how did you feel about it well that was that was something it was a dream coming true because i remember uh, when watching oscars was our big thing at that point of time we used to get into midnight because oscars happened in india at the time is midnight so we used to get up at midnight and see all the oscar events and वंडर की अपना इंडियन फिल्म कभी जाएगा मेरा फिल्म तो छोड़ो बट इवन एन इंडियन फिल्म वेर कैन बी कुड बी अ पार्ट ऑफ एंड सडनली माय फर्स्ट मराठी फिल्म श्वास व्हिच वाज अ पार्ट ऑफ ऑस्कर दिस वाज आई मीन व्हेन द न्यूज केम आई जस्ट डिडंट बिलीव इट आई सेड नो दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच बट देन इट वाज अ बिग इवेंट एंड देन obviously uh, all over the industry uh, with people it was it was i mean loved by people and the whole there was a whole movement happening here because it was a challenge here for the film to be taken there it required a cost you know to take yeah. the film there to even my team my director to go there and stay there or whatever to so even the cost was i mean people uh, there was a crowd funding happened here which was on a big movement here yes. so that film was a wave i would say and uh, that film also gave me my career i would say uh, because at that i was a uh, young quite and i had to play an oncologist which who is quite successful who is already kind of very expert he is you know his word is the last word and that age so i had to kind of actually but i i mean shailesh puntambekar who's uh, actually who had gone through this experience and would written a story on that so i met him i used to be in his clinic i uh, observed his operation so basically how an successful oncologist operates and how he you know kind of things so all this i could observe and i could recreate it in my film so that is where shavana azmi had this and it she actually thought that i am from medicine like dr sriram lagu or a few actors who had done medicine and who have become actors so <laughs> so i said no i was and she was completely amazed i said she said oh that's brilliant so yeah now i mean uh, do do you still remember who brought this news to you that the movie was going to oscars and how your first reaction to that was well my in fact my producer arun nalavde uh, because it was his uh, thing and uh, obviously because uh, i think because we had worked on a series earlier so we knew each other so when we did this film it was again a kind of a very collaborated energy that had worked together so there was no producer producer it was like you know uh, 10 people came together and arun was leading that uh, thing so obviously he called me and said so uh, that was again a great moment yeah but just for our viewers and listeners i mean the movie was at number 6 in worldwide and i think it's it's a big thing to achieve for a, a movie so and congratulations also, yeah. also won the golden peacock award after years in the national award yeah so it's the the biggest national award that the exactly. film was see yeah so yeah the the whole hard work that that goes in i mean yeah. it pays in one way or the other i mean this this was the best thing that could have happened uh before i go to the next question stefan would you like to say something uh you're on mute Okay, oh, I'm, so I'm 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 listening uh, carefully. And that's uh, very interesting just to hear about that. No, no, go on. I think the, your next question will go on to Gombi Valley Fast. Yes, yeah. So let's let's Fine. move from you. <laughs> let's move forward from year two thousand and four to two thousand and six now. Yeah. So movie Gombi Valley Fast, another gem of your performance that the world got to see, a movie that even got you a Star Screens Award. the best actor male in marathi movie so for our viewers and listeners i mean who might not be aware of this movie yet would you like to tell us a little bit about this movie and how it happened what was the background so that was again a big struggle to make that film because nishikant kamath who is the writer director of the film again who was my friend and uh, shwas was a wave 
and uh, so we i personally wanted because uh, before shwas i couldn't imagine myself in marathi film because it was more of those comedy films and which uh, was completely out of my discipline or whatever i had you know kind of brought up uh, so i we wanted uh, me and uh, nishikant as a collaborative effort we wanted to make this dombili fast or this film happen because this might extend that move, mo- movement of you know marathi films into a a new wave of films so but it took us one and half year to get a producer on board for that film because it was a very uh, challenging film in terms of storytelling and in terms of making that film because it required a good budget to make that kind of film because it was too many live locations and too many you know on the, the train so a little more expensive and to shoot because it was the need of the film so after some one and a half year we got a very good producer who could back that idea and the you know that concept and uh, then again you know uh, dombili fast become a wave and again that because won the national award uh, it stayed in theaters for almost 29 weeks and uh, oh. because and uh, so uh, uh, i mean again and that point of time people just i mean took that film to there and i was in fact when we made the film we thought that this film might not go to the two two tier or three tier villages because it uh, uh, looked like a very city centric film mm. but uh, because i don't know because of the story the emotions or whatever that connected even the village or the small three tier cities the every household had that dvd you know dombili return uh, dombili fast and that is how i really i'm i'm still known by dombili fast by that character <laughs> yeah. so in spite of doing so many films after that uh, and uh, we also won the uh, best film in the los los angeles film festival at that point of time so we won a few international uh, uh, awards also uh, and that and i of, of course as an actor i won all the awards of that year from all the indian marathi film awards so, really great yeah but um, yeah maybe i can step in here because uh, i want to but get um, a little deeper into it what do you think made it really that because i learned that um, dombey valley fast is really a cult movie um, and for those who not know um, mumbai uh, the people in mumbai the local people speak marathi although mumbai is a center for the bollywood uh, hindi kino uh, hindi cinema um and uh, i learned so i talked to a lot of people um, for example choreographers and and people who work in the industry but also um their their original langui- language um, is or was marathi so everybody knew it it's a cult so if you um it's like for example in germany like uh, you know fastbinder maybe not the right comparison but uh, yeah it was such a cult um that uh, was it because uh, it it hit um a feeling a theme um which was vibrant at that time in the right time or what do you think what was uh, um and the character you were, you were playing is that uh, normal normal guy you know the normal family man uh, what do you yeah. think what what made it uh, that it's such a cult i think yes the character in fact was very identified by people uh, one is emotionally and uh, the the that point of time again yes that was the right film at that time because at that point of time everybody or even uh, the common man and somebody had this bottled up uh, emotions to come out you know to say something to express and that film identified that that is what i thought that i think that identified with everybody that's why i'm saying it also identified with the three tier cities and uh, the three tier villages and every uh, everywhere all that also internationally because as i said that human emotion of a man and it was lucky so that's again the whole uh, film went where, because that was on a border line it could have been a very typical bollywoodish kind of a film which could have been a very dramatic and very you know loud film but we kept a real emotion of a character and the treatment of the film which made it so real 
that sometimes uh, people used to get a, a impact and uh, I, I've seen people after watching the film, they couldn't speak for a while. It was such an impact of that film. Mm -hmm. So how, how uh, was the, the, uh, the film received in other parts of India? Because it's a Marathi film, so that means it, it didn't travel or how was it? Um, Oh, yes. As I said, in fact, uh, uh, at that point of time, after a week itself, uh, the big producers, the Bollywood producers, Abbas Mastan, bought all the languages rights. Okay. And they were uh, keen on making it in Hindi. So I also heard the news that they, they're thinking of Ajay Devgan to play the role and whatever, whatever. So not knowing that this film will, I mean, after that, that Marathi film became such a big wave that all the Bollywood Everybody saw that film, you know, so then there was no point even making that film because everybody had seen the film because every, it was a talk of the town. It was talk of the, you know, everything. And of course, it also traveled internationally. As I said, uh, I think we also won the Singapore uh, Film Festival. We won the, the best film in Los Angeles Film Festival, a few uh, international awards for this film. Uh, uh, with obviously with subtitles and as I said, the whole treatment of the film was very global at that point of time, if you see. So, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, my, I am, um, my, I, I think my, my question was a little bit, um, I, I asked it the, the wrong way. And what I meant is uh, in, in India, you are used if there is a success in one language that you mm. do remakes in other languages, that you do a remake in Telugu language, and Kannada language, as you said, in Hindi. But okay, I understand for the, for the Bollywood industry, everybody has seen the movie, so for them it yeah. wasn't... Uh, um, and that was my question, so if there... Uh, was so it question was... Make it it was... In the yeah. other languages. It, it was remade, it was a remake in uh, Tamil. Ah, so okay. Madhavan played my role. And it was almost the same treatment because Nishikant only directed it. So it was the same treatment. But uh, somehow it didn't do well in Tamil because the culture and the life there, because the, the, the main thing was he, this character travels in train. Mm. So half of his life here in city, I mean, especially in Mumbai, half of your life goes in your train because people travel from Dombuli. So, he, so Dombuli is a suburb where he travels to. So, you know, traveling from Dombuli to the city, it, it's like it takes a lot of time of yours. Yeah. And it's a, it's, a, it's a task because it's so crowded to get a window seat is something like a big achievement. So yes. it's there in the film. So, so that whole life is there in the film. Mm. So which doesn't have the same life in Tamil. So here is a very good example where when you adapt, adapt a film, Unless you adapt that life or if that life doesn't exist there, it's not really a good adaptation. Yeah. I would, no, no, so, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now it comes in my mind. It's like, um, uh, wasn't it said by people that's a tech, or for me at least, it's a taxi driver of India, or isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. In fact, uh, um, uh, it, and we, I think Nishikant, we openly had said that it's more inspired by taxi driver and falling down. Mm. Yeah. So, and it's such a good coincidence that when um, uh, uh, Los Angeles Film Festival, Nishikant had gone to the festival, my director, because uh, and it, it was shot on film, so one has to take those reels. No, it was not digital at that point of time. So he had gone, and uh, so I think uh, Falling Down's director was the head of the jury. Mm. That festival. And uh, Nishikant thought that now it will be, there's no chance for this film. <laughs> so because, you know, but when the final day and Nishikant was there and the final, when he, in fact, the, I forgot the name of the director. He, he came and announced in the last, uh, of the closing uh, ceremony. Mm -hmm. He said, I've seen uh, all the Bollywood, all the films from India, which has traveled here, uh, even the Bollywood films and all that. But there's this one film which reminds me of my film. But I feel this is much better than my film. And uh, that's why I feel this is the best film of this festival. And he announced the best film for this festival. And he also suggested Michael to see the film. Michael Douglas. Mm -hmm. uh, so Michael also I, saw the film at that uh, point of time. So great. They all loved the film. But they, they didn't do an American remake. 
uh, all <laughs> <laughs> because I think they have uh, already. Like, kind of, I don't yeah. know how, it, so, how. So many a times, yes, films do inspire, or even uh, actors do inspire you, and content do inspire you. But the whole point is, if you take it to another level, or if you kind of really kind of bring the life into that, or you have that. Uh, original uh, insight of making, uh, you know, uh, creating, recreating a story. That matters, I think. Yeah. Because I, I mean, even the masters say, finally, there are some 24 plots, and you always play with those plots differently in different ways. I think it's also how you connect with the emotions where where you are releasing the movie, and somewhere I, I have also because of traveling around. What I have learned is, yeah, people might be speaking different languages, uh, might be different cultures, but somewhere those emotions are still the same. It's, yeah, it's yeah, emotions absolutely. all across the world. So if if you hit the right note, you connect with the emotions there. So I think exactly. that's that's very important. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Stefan. Hmm. Raman. Um, okay. <laughs> So, I mean, let's, let's now jump from 2006 to 2019, Dombi Valley Returns. So, my question here is, after 2006, Dombi Valley Fast being so big hit, why it took 13 years to release the next version? Well, uh, again, to clarify here, that is definitely not a sequel of Dombi Valley Fast. Uh, in fact, at that point of time, many producers approached us and said that, why can't, why can't we make a sequel of Dombi Valley Fast? But... That was absolutely not possible. One is because the character dies in the end. Second is the level of intensity that the film reaches or the character, the travel of the character reaches. You can't go beyond that. It's a very intense film as it is. You can't get that intensity back again in the sequel or whatever, even if you have something. Uh, here, what happened is uh, Mahendra Tiridesai, who's my old friend from theater days, he had this uh, story of a common man who again stays in a suburb and who has a story and which again connected somehow to Dombili. So we just, and this again story, in this story, this is a return journey of a character. Right? So, uh, so people who have seen the film, the character comes back home to his family. Whereas in Dombili Fast, the character dies. He cannot come back to his family. I mean, that's, he's deprived. I mean, his, the family is deprived of him. So here the character comes back and this is again an inner journey. Whereas Dombili Fast is an outburst. As I said, it's a bottled emotion which bursts into something which an in, with an in, intensity and which is a little destructive. Here it's an inner journey. Yeah. But so, I mean, was it, was it the story that came to uh, after like 13 years or I mean, what yeah, was the reason? Yeah. The yeah. story that came after 13 years, as I said, because as I, we always believe, as, as I said, the story will determine the title, determine the, you know, the way uh, it should be approached to, uh, because uh, the story always is the, uh, I mean, the roots or the, the seed of everything. Yeah. So the story mm -hmm. decided everything. So story decided the name, story decided the treatment, story decided the, you know, everything. Yeah. And I mean, again, congratulations to you. You won an award for this movie as well. So, oh, yeah. And again, I mean, for, for our viewers and listeners, it's a nice movie to watch. So Domi Valley Returns. If you are looking for a good movie to watch, we we'll recommend this movie. Some digital platform. We are already talking to some of you digital platform for this. Right. Great. Thank you. Uh, shall I move to my next question? Uh, yeah, just to add uh, something. So, Sandeep, uh, whenever that uh, deal is done, let us know so that we can uh, oh, sure. uh, let it know to uh, oh, give yes. this news to our audience. Because, um, yeah, you, as you know, you, um, as you remember, we got a lot of applause uh, for the film in Berlin. Um, yep. We had it at the opening film, and I, yeah, I'm, uh, I love both films. Um, uh, both have their uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Dombi Valley Fast is the classic and Dombi Valley Return is a modern uh, thriller. So both are really brilliant films. Yeah, right. definitely. I would love to. Yeah. So when let's let's now move towards OTT platforms. We, we, we talked about it. I think also before the call we started, we were having a chat about this digitalization that is happening. So, so question, I mean, what do you think? How will the scope of Indian regional language movies be impacted with the introduction of so many OTT platforms? 
on one side i mean there is a possibility like the viewership of regional language movies can grow up because the reach is becoming higher yeah or it can also be like due to movies like gulab us sitabo or other big movies now releasing on ott you can see that the scope of regional movies content can also get limited so what is your vision on it how do you think it will turn up for the regional movies especially see especially for regional movies uh, especially for marathi because we always uh, bollywood always coexist here with in maharashtra with marathi movies so we always have a challenge of releasing and distributing this movie uh, well you know to reach the audience completely and there's always a challenge because if there is a couple of bollywood movies there is very difficult to get theaters here for marathi films and all that so in spite of you know making a very good film unless you have a very big corporate like z it is very difficult to penetrate to all you know to take uh, uh, get the film to all areas in maharashtra so digital platform is i would say a boon wherein you that the whole distribution uh, challenge is gone and the film is available and anybody can see it at his own time uh, you know favorable time so that's a very big advantage for a digital plan especially for regional films because uh, 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 it it's it can be seen globally it can be seen by many audiences wherever the digital platform is there especially with netflix amazon and hotstar and the platforms uh, and uh, uh, it stays for there i mean it stays for ever so people can visit see the film after a month again it's there one can see so the film is live yeah here if you really don't get good uh, distribution the film just disappears in a week and then unless it's if it's on satellite or it's a digital player you don't get the access uh, uh, but then for me yes i am always a theater man because we have grown in theater we have you know seen world cinema and everything in theater because that's experiential and that experience cannot be uh, you know kind of uh, 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 adapted on digital platform because that that dark space with the sound and which you know completely exactly. on a big screen that's something which has an i, I think it will always coexist it will yeah. always coexist now so, i think it's it's also very important like when people are in the cinema they have left everything out they are concentrating fully on the movie True. and they 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 are there to spend time on the movie when you are watching it on ott you can pause it and pick up other things i think there there are always positives and negatives of yeah. both sides yeah. right so and i think also somewhere where uh, big producers they they make movie for such big experience so to say yeah True. with all the technology that you put into the movie i think it's somewhere much better if you watch it on big screen i mean that's my personal view there absolutely but yes absolutely. with with the current times yes ott platforms are picking up but somewhere i think the charm of that big screen as you said will always yes. be there so yes. it will it will coexist yes yeah. Yeah. but especially mm-hmm. for small films uh, yeah. which you know don't have bigger budgets to kind of release the film or something but for them ott is a very good platform because that can really give them a very good big uh, release and with a bigger audiences and they will have a nice viewers at it yeah stefan no uh, i'm sure you always have the positives and uh, um, sides and the negative sides the positive sides of having a cinema screening is you really get direct response you know you can have a q and a you're in contact with the audience and um uh, yeah, that you don't have at the ott platform but the good is with the ott platform for filmmakers uh, there's a big demand now and if they treat the filmmakers in a good way in a good manner um then it's always good to work with them uh, we have yeah. also good stories here for example unorthodox for the uh, uh um four pieces 45 minutes um uh it was a, a um uh they feel there, there was a novel uh, which turned into this tv series and um everybody was very keen in in uh, watching the the mini series they had they could have made um, a cinema film uh, out of that but they decided to go to the ott platform because um that was fast you know they um, they had a fast pitch they they greenlighted it and there was not it was not not so complicated to finance it for example mm-hmm. in cinema you always yeah you need uh, much more money um, and then a green light from so many 
um, places uh, to get the money together, um, at least the bigger budget pro uh, projects. So that is not so easy to um, get it on the floors, you know. Yeah. Now, maybe, uh, Dombi Valley, maybe Dombi Valley return has been would have been much faster <laughs> <laughs> after Dombi Valley fast uh, uh, <laughs> if there have been uh, OTT platforms. I don't know. Anyway. True. Agreed. But I mean, it's it's also uh, according to my point of view, it's also a different kind of audience uh, perspective, so to say. I think with OTT platforms, the first ten minutes of the movie really matters because you if it should catch your attention as as a viewer else i mean you have the remote in your hand and you can basically move to something else i think that that's also another important factor that that comes with ott platforms with like you have to catch the audience in the first few minutes so to say so that the interest is there i mean there are movies which have been big hit which start slow they build up and then they they become like really the movie that that you really want to watch it's it's a different kind of uh, scenario i would say so yeah Every every platform has their own positives. Yeah. Sizes. So this is yeah. So as I said earlier, one has to understand the mediums. You know, even for the for the writers, for the actors, for technicians, because the uh, OTT has a different format of writing and uh, conceiving a story. Because again, uh, one is you have to have multi. I mean, many multi tracks, which will hold the main story. Plus that every episode, the end should be a little uh, inquis inquisitive, where which will you know, which will raise your curiosity for the second episode. Yeah. So that has to. So it has a different format. So one has to understand the format and the medium to write and play. But uh, uh, you know, uh, when I was doing this City of Dreams, Nagesh Kukunur had seen Dogeli Fast, and since then. He had called me again that point of time when he saw the film and he had liked the film and all. He said, "We'll definitely. I would like to work with you whenever you get a chance." And we never got a chance because, uh, and somehow it just didn't happen. So when he wrote this city of dreams, when he, he was writing this character, he had me in mind. And for him, it became very easy because he had actually casted even other Marathi actors, which were very good actors, which needed for that content, which you know very. So the web series has got very good talent uh, uh, on the platform. You know, it, uh, otherwise in Bollywood, what happens is you really need to have a face which will, you know, which is a Bollywoodish kind of a face. But here, you really need good actors which will create that texture, that atmosphere, that you know, which will uh, enhance the content more than the. So and Nagesh was very happy to, and we had a great time working. So. This gives a, you know, an, you an opportunity to work with good directors again, Bollywood yeah. directors and. Sure. Uh, before I move to my last question, Stefan, would you like to ask something? Sure, you can go on. Um, all yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So Sandeep ji, I mean, such big hits in the past, some awards that that you have won as well as an appreciation of your hard work, I would say. So what is next? Any upcoming project in the pipeline? Yes, one is, as I said, the second season of City of Dreams, which once we open up, that will be the first thing that I think we'll be shooting because even the platform needs it badly because they want that content to be made. Uh, there's the one biopic which we have been making from last year. It's on uh, 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 Mahatma Phule, so which is again a very ambitious project in Marathi. And uh, that is something which I'm really looking for. So we have almost completed a 64% of the film, which we already shot. But because it's a period film, one has to actually recreate that set. So unless it's completely kind of settled, we will not be able to kind of start because it really requires a lot of uh, budget to recreate that period. So one has to... Then there is another uh, from my uh, production house. We are uh, already uh, written a couple of uh, uh, web series, which we have uh, almost kind of pitched it to uh, uh, OTT platforms and they had liked it conceptually. And we are going to have further meetings as it open up. And, and there are another film, which we want to shoot in Nasik, which is completely on a, uh, uh, a mystery, which is a husband wife story, which has a mystery and which almost has layers of Nasik as tradition, uh, 
because Nasik has a very good tradition of the modern uh, world, like wineries and all, and it also has this traditional old uh, world of religion, and you know, it has a and again, it's uh, they say it's a land of Rama, so so it has a different so the story has different layers into this film. So we are very keen on making this story happen. Yeah. Oh, you already got me with the description there. No? <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have one uh, more question to City of Dreams. Um, so um, in India, it's available on Hotstar. Do you know if there is any way to get it outside of India? Hotstar? Um, oh, okay. No, no, no just a series. A city of Dreams. Okay. Oh, okay. You in Germany, you don't have Hotstar there, right? No, no, no. Yeah. It's a, it's an Indian uh, it's an Indian um, OTT platform only. Oh, because uh, now even Disney has uh, Disney has taken over, so I think it should uh, uh, come to all countries because now uh, uh, Hotstar is taken by Disney. Mm -hmm. Disney World. So I I would uh, I would check with my producer and uh, see if uh, you know if I we could pass on some i mean a link or something that could, one could see the series yeah please yeah. or even if there is a um, even if in some near future there is a possibility to, to see the uh, the series that would be fantastic yes um, um, i will i'll do my best to do you that. know then maybe it, it comes together with another in, uh, with a new invitation to berlin to present the series first in a <laughs> premiere at babylon or so oh yeah. yes I'll I'll check with my producers. I'll definitely they'll be excited too. Yeah. Last time I missed to meet you in person, but this time when you are there, yeah, I will be there with Stefan to welcome you. Oh yes, we must. We must. Yes. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Sandeep Ji. Me too. Stefan. Yeah, Raman. I don't know if uh, you have. Um, do you have a last question? Because I'm. I have. Um, my 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 um, bag is empty. My bag. Okay. Is empty. <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm also done with the questions that I had prepared. But it was a real pleasure, Sandeep Ji, talking to you. Thank you very much for taking all the time for us. Yeah. It was my pleasure. Too. Yeah. Thank you. Take yeah. care. You all take care. See you yeah. soon. In Thank person. You from my side, side, Sandeep, it was a big, big, big pleasure talking to you. And please uh, give also a warm hug to all your fellow friends sure. who have been here to Berlin and uh, to your wife and to your family. And sure. uh, let me know uh, once your son uh, will come to Germany, then we will also um, organize a big welcome for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So that would be a reason again for us to come down. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Most welcome. <laughs> yeah.